Hi there. My name is Dr. Harmon. It is a pleasure to meet you today. Likewise. So I hear you're coming in for a cranial examination today. All right. Okay, so how it usually works is you will see a primary care provider or an internist who will assess you and do a history and physical exam and find that you might need a consultation by a specialist, a neurologist, such as myself, who is going to do a more thorough neurological evaluation, which is what we're going to be doing today. Okay? So specifically, today I'm going to be checking your cranial nerves. And I hear that you were referred today because you hurt your head. Is that what happened? Okay, I'm very sorry to hear that. I hear you had a very nasty fall. Mm -hmm. so we're going to try our best today to do a very complete, thorough cranial nerve exam for you so that we don't miss anything and that you can be ensured that you're getting the best care. All right? So, because this is the first time that you are my patient, I also like to go through why and what is the components of a cranial nerve exam so you can better understand what doctors are doing when we're looking in your eye and poking you in your face, okay? Perfect. So, at any point if you have any questions, go ahead and interrupt me and I do not mind at all answering any of your questions. So why don't we go ahead and get started with the cranial nerve exam, all right? The way Perfect. I'm gonna be doing this cranial nerve exam is we are gonna go through each and every cranial nerve. There are 12 of them. And what we're gonna be doing is going through cranial nerve one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12, and make sure that all your cranial nerves are operating the way they should. And I'll explain how we're testing them and what a normal cranial nerve should do, okay? All right, so let's start with cranial nerve one. So cranial nerve one is the olfactory nerve and that is responsible for your sense of smell, right? So the way our noses work is there are little molecules all over the place, all the time. And when these molecules hit the receptors in your nose that fit snugly to that particle, it's gonna send signals throughout your nervous system. And they're gonna go to your brain and they're going to tell you what you're smelling, right? And there are all sorts of fascinating things that we still don't know about smell. Like how when you go to your Home Depot and say you smell some paint, it may remind you of your old house that you had a long time ago. And that's because smell is closely linked to our memories in the hippocampus and the amygdala. And we haven't really worked out the details of how all of this work. So that's gonna be a common theme throughout all of neurology. We're not that deep into discovering the nuances, but we can tell when your cranial nerve is not working, okay? So the way we're gonna do that is I'm going to hold up a something that smells, that something that has a strong smell that you should be able to recognize up to your nose, and you're gonna keep your eyes closed, and then you're gonna tell me what you think it smells like, okay? Number one, do you smell anything at all? And number two, what exactly is the scent you're smelling? And if you're unable to do this, it could mean that you quite possibly could have damaged your cranial nerve one. And 
that would not be too far-fetched of a finding given that cranial nerve one is usually the cranial nerve damaged when you experience trauma such as a fall because the cranial nerve travels up in through your nose up to the back up to the top through a structure called the cribiform plate the cribiform plate and as these nerves go through the cribiform plate say you have trauma such as a fall the nerves can actually get severed and destroyed and cut along this cribriform plate when you have some kind of trauma where you're going at a high velocity and hit something very hard and stop immediately exactly so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to hold something up to your nose so go ahead and close your eyes and i'm just going to hold something up to your nose don't cheat it's not going to do either of us any good if you cheat during any of these cranial nerve exams all right so go ahead close your eyes i'm just going to come around here and get right up here and just tell me what you smell do you smell anything okay great so that's a good sign but can you tell me what you're smelling oh it smells like alcohol pads excellent excellent so i was holding an alcohol pad up to your nose and you did guess that correct so let's move on to cranial nerve two so cranial nerve two is the optic nerve so the optic nerve is responsible for vision it is responsible for taking the visual information that is all around us the world and taking it in and this light hits the back of our retina and is processed and turned into a signal that our brain can decipher and it's carried to our brain through cranial nerve 2 or optic nerve okay so the way we check optic nerve is with a Snellen chart or similar device that is usually the device you see on the ophthalmologist wall with the letters and they ask you to identify what is the lowest line the smallest letters that you can read and then they have you cover one eye and cover the other eye. Oh, you recently saw an ophthalmologist and they checked you out? Okay, and this was after the fall? Okay, well, let me go ahead and look that up in our charts. And if that checks out, we can move on to cranial nerve three. Okay, so bear with me and I'm gonna go ahead and check that out. What was your date of birth again? Okay. And how exactly do you spell your last name? It's an interesting last name. I have not heard that one before. Well, yes. So it does seem like you were seen with an ophthalmologist and they checked you out to have no damage to that nerve. So. I don't think we need to pull out the charts and do cranial nerve two. Let's move on to cranial nerve three, okay? So cranial nerve three is the oculomotor nerve. And oculomotor nerve controls the muscles of the eye. There are quite a few that it controls. It controls the medial rectus, superior rectus, the inferior rectus, and the inferior oblique. Okay, and what these muscles do is they move your eye left, right, up, down, along with cranial nerve 
4, and 6. So we can actually test 3, 4, and 6 together. 4 being the trochlear nerve and 6 being the abducens nerve. Okay. So the way I'm going to check this is I'm going to have you cover one eye. Okay. And I want you to focus without moving your head on my finger. Okay. And now just keep my finger in focus and do not move your head. Okay. So we're going to go out this way, this way with just your eyeballs. Good. Very good. Perfect. Excellent job. Great job with that. And if you could just flip your hand and cover the other eye. Perfect. And we're going to do the same exact thing, all right? Good. Very good. Great. Very good job. You passed perfectly. And so if you had any trouble moving in a certain direction with just your eyeballs, that would pretty accurately describe which muscle was the problem. Say you were not able to move your right eye laterally that tells me your right eye your right cranial nerve six might have a problem because that is the nerve that controls that muscle to take this eyeball out that way all right so it's very specific for every single direction so let's okay. go ahead and check your trigeminal nerve which is cranial nerve 5. So the best way to check cranial nerve 5 is to actually feel this part of your face, then this part of your face, and this part of your face. And we want to compare if you can feel it and if it feels the same on both sides of your face. Okay, so I'm going to come in real close and you can relax, sit back, Close your eyes and let me know if you feel this coming down your left side of your face. Okay? So, just coming in here. Do you feel that? Okay. How about down here? And down here? Excellent. Excellent. So, you're doing so great for this cranial nerve exam. We are halfway done. I'm just gonna go ahead, remember how that felt on your left side. I'm gonna come to your right side and let's just go ahead and do a comparison, okay? So first off, can you feel that? Okay, and how does that compare to the other side? About the same, how about down here? Mm-hmm, how about down here? All right, so you did feel it on all of those positions and you're telling me it felt the same on both sides so we're about halfway through and cranial nerve 5 also checks out so that is excellent okay so you're doing very well it does not seem like this fall did much damage to you in terms of your cranial nerves okay so let's move on to the next cranial nerve so we've done one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's move on to cranial nerve seven. And this is a bit of a fun one to check, okay? It's a bit of a goofy one. So basically to check this nerve, I'm gonna ask you to make a bunch of goofy faces because this nerve is called the facial nerve. And it controls a bunch of different facial muscles, all the ones that I'm using right now to make these facial expressions. So let's get started with checking cranial nerve 7 and I'm going to start off by asking you to raise your eyebrows. Raise them as high as they go. 
perfect. And then could you scrunch up your face, make a really, really grumpy face, scrunch it up. Perfect. And then can you give me a really, really big grin, as wide as you can grin. Okay, excellent. And then just pucker out your lips, just pucker them out. Perfect. All right. So great job again. And it does look like cranial nerve seven also checks out because you are able to make all those faces. I don't see any asymmetry in your face. Cranial nerve seven can be a little funny as well. So there's this condition, which you might've heard of, that's called Bell's palsy, okay? And Bell's palsy is an attack of, we don't know exactly what, it could be viral, it could be autoimmune, could be a bunch of different things that we just haven't figured out yet. I told you there's a lot of that in neurology, okay? So once cranial nerve seven gets attacked, what you can actually have is a loss of the entire facial expression muscles on one side of your face. It's possible you can have Bell's palsy on both sides of the face, but the key here is that you lose muscle tone in both your upper part of your face and your lower part of your face. So you kind of have a sag going on. If you're on one side, all the muscles are kind of going to sag down. You're not going to have much of a muscle tone here in your mouth. So it's going to sag downward on one side. Okay. And why that's important is if you have a stroke or some problem with your brain, you can actually have just loss of the lower part of your face with the upper part of your face intact. Yeah, cranial nerve seven's a little funny. Don't worry too much about it. Yours checks out and is doing great, okay? So Excellent. let's keep it moving and move on to cranial nerve eight. So cranial nerve eight is called the vestibulocochlear nerve, all right? And this is the nerve, among many other things, is responsible for your hearing. And that's another point I want to make, that while I am testing these things, your cranial nerves do a lot of different things. Many, many different things. Our cranial nerves are very busy. These are just some tests to sample if your cranial nerves have an issue. Okay, so we're just testing out some critical functions some critical functions of these nerves. Right, so for this one, I'm gonna come in real close and ask if you hear this or this, okay? So I'm basically gonna be making a few sounds. You let me know when you hear them, if you hear them, all right? Perfect, so I'm gonna come in here Okay, perfect, and this side. Were you able to hear that? Beautiful, beautiful. Everything's doing very nicely with this cranial nerve exam. So cranial nerve nine and cranial nerve 12 can both be tested together because both of these nerves are responsible for controlling the muscles of the tongue. So again, this is a bit of a funny nerve, so I'm gonna ask you to do a few things with your tongue, all right? So let's go ahead and begin. And if you could just stick your tongue out. Okay, perfect. And then move it side to side. Okay, and then stick your tongue out and say, ah. Uh, perfect. All right, so cranial nerve nine and 12, check out as well, because your tongue moves appropriately. I don't see your uvula, which is that little thing that you see hanging down in the middle of your mouth. That's called an uvula, that's the medical term for it. And we wanna make sure that's nice and centered, it's not deviating toward any side. And yours is not. Okay, I should have mentioned that during cranial nerve 9 and 12 assessment, you can also assess, which I did cranial nerve 
10 as well. Cranial nerve 10 is quite a busy cranial nerve. It does a vast amount of different functions throughout your body. And one of them is aiding in helping you talk, swallow, and control the muscles around your neck that aid in these functions, okay? So because you're talking to me fine, I don't see any problems with your swallowing. Um, cranial nerve 10 does check out unless you have complaints of any other symptoms, which I don't see anywhere in your chart or no, okay. So cranial nerve 10, I don't suspect to have any damage as well. So this would leave us with cranial nerve 11, okay? Cranial nerve 11, the way we test it is looking at its motor functions because cranial nerve 11 innervates two muscles of your body and that is the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscles, okay? The sternocleidomastoid muscles lie right on the sides of our neck here, okay? And they connect all the different parts of the body in their name, the sternum, the clavicle, and the mastoid, okay? And what they're responsible for doing, they're a little funny as well. Even though this is my right side, and my right sternocleidomastoid is actually going to help me look to the left. It's a little bit funny. It's the way that the, the muscle actually attaches to my head, okay? So if it pulls, it's going to cause me to turn left. My trapezius muscles are going to help me, among other things, raise my shoulders, shrug my shoulders. So I'm going to assess if you can do these things and if you can do them with appropriate strength. Before we move on to cranial nerve 11's testing, I should have asked you what exactly were you doing when you had this fall? Okay, so you were trying a new workout fad that you got from YouTube and that was to run backwards with your eyes closed down a very bumpy, rocky trail and that was supposed to help you lose weight. Okay, so just for future recommendations, I do not think that that is an appropriate exercise. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound like a great idea. Okay, maybe stick to some jumping jacks or running around a track with your eyes open. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and check cranial nerve 11. I'm gonna come in and put my hand here on your face and you're gonna to try to rotate your head against it. Then we're gonna do the other side. And then I'm gonna put my hands on your shoulders and I need you to shrug up against them. And I'm gonna assess if you can do this and your strength of your muscles. Okay, so let's just go ahead and get started. I'm gonna come in here and go ahead and push your head and rotate it into my hand. Good. And same thing on this side. Go ahead and rotate. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my hands on your shoulders here. Go ahead and shrug. Excellent. So that will do it for our cranial nerve exam today. And it does seem like you check out and all your cranial nerves are working appropriately and are operational to their fullest extent. And you should not need any more follow-ups for this particular complaint unless something new arises, something like vision changes, unexplained headaches, anything along those lines that you find is a new finding that particularly concerns you, definitely do not hesitate to get in contact with a doctor again, okay? But for now, I don't think you have any sustained damage. 
your cranial nerves are working all fine. Part of cranial nerve three's function is to make sure that you have a good response to light. So before you leave, I definitely want to make sure we cover all of our bases, even though I think your cranial nerve three is doing just fine. Okay, so I'm going to take this light. And what we're going to do is we're going to just shine it into your eye. So you can just go ahead and look forward. Look straight forward. Okay, we're going to look into both eyes here. Excellent. So your pupils, when they're hit with light, are going to try to constrict. And that is exactly what happens when I shine that light into your eye. So that checks out as well. And that's just one test I definitely did not want to forget. A lot of patients don't particularly enjoy the light in their eyes. It gets them a little blinded. So sometimes I save it for the end. Okay. Perfect. So do you have any questions? Because everything does check out. No? Okay, well, thank you very much for coming in and seeing me. And it was a pleasure to get to take care of you and check you out here. Okay? So do not hesitate to come back and visit um, just to say hello or hopefully not with another cranial nerve problem. Okay? All right, then. Take care.